Today I want to talk about my own journey a little bit more. So I'm going to talk about what my process of going through a boot camp looked like, what I was doing beforehand, kind of how I've gotten to the place I'm at now today. So a few years ago, I was in college at Ohio State University. I uh, haven't talked about this ton publicly, but I do think I want to make this part of my content here. So I'm going to just, uh, set, or just say that I have ADHD. And as I was going through my undergraduate career, I essentially was struggling increasingly more and more with getting different deadlines done, getting things uh, handled. I got diagnosed with ADHD in college, and honestly what I should have done was taken a year or two off of school and gotten my kind of hands around the disorder and then gone back. And instead what I tried to do was kind of white knuckle my way through. So I started out actually in computer science thinking that was what I was going to do from an undergraduate perspective. Um, I couldn't make the GPA to get into the major, so I had to switch majors. Uh, so I switched majors a few times, ended up in sustainability, made it through about six and a half years total of undergraduate with like 200 some completed credit hours with the college, and then uh, was dismissed from the university because I had a bad semester at the end of that period. So I have strong thoughts about Ohio State. I don't think it's the greatest educational institution in the world, but I'm not really gonna get into that here uh, because I, that's not really the point of this channel. Coming out of that, I was kind of at a loss and I have been working as a climber for about, at that point, for about seven years. And so um, I've been climbing now for about 10. And I had a lot of experience. I had led groups uh, for my university, like going out on trips out into the woods and things like that. I had. Um, taught for years um, a lot of technical skills within climbing so I had taught things like belay skills, lead climbing skills, you know outdoor anchor building, all kinds of like kind of the whole gamut. So I found a job at a local chain of climbing gyms and I am a go-getter so I immediately kind of started at the ground level, worked my way into a manager role in less than a year and then as I was working as a manager we had two other managers that were working with me. Um, one of them got backed off of their responsibilities and so Long story short, I essentially was operating as the general manager of this chain of three gems within about two years of starting there and reporting straight to the president of the company. It was a great gig and it was honestly what I thought I wanted to do. I really enjoyed working with climbing. I enjoyed being able to work with my hands a little bit more uh, and move around at my job. But the big thing there was I had taught myself a lot of the technical material I was going to need to know for my entire career and I'm a kind of a lifelong learning person. So I was feeling really distraught about that, I think to some extent. But then also, I just, honestly, the pay was very low. I was making about $32,000 a year to do that job. And the, the uh, time that was required, the work-life balance was awful. I was spending, you know, 60 or 70 hours a week in the different facilities and just was fully burned out and exhausted. So all this was happening at the start of 2020. Without knowing COVID was coming, I went ahead and signed up for my boot camp uh, for around that May. And the reason I went for a boot camp was I really wanted to find a career path where I could find, you know, something that was a little more focused on creating, uh, a little more directly. Like I wanted to actually make a product of some kind. I didn't really want to work in a service sector or like a facility sector position again. And so I really wanted to be able to make things. That's really important to me. I'm a creative person. I enjoy the process of creating. And so having a job where I could actually create things meant a lot to me. So software made a lot of sense because I had the analytical background. I had a couple years of code um, under my belt from college and I knew that it was a pretty lucrative field. I didn't really think it was quite what it has become the last few years, but it's turned out to be a quite good financial investment as well. All right, so now we talked a little bit about why software was a good fit for me. Let's talk about why the bootcamp specifically was the right move for me as I was looking at a career change. So with ADHD, you know, I'm kind of a non-traditional learner. And so I've definitely had to go through and learn different systems and skills. And one of the things I found is it's really hard for me to juggle disparate pieces of material. So if I have to go learn like a literature history class and then go straight from that into an engineering class, I really struggle changing gears between those two things. Uh, and it's a lot easier for me to study one thing a day, essentially. And the boot camp route was great because it was really focused. It was essentially four hours of lecture in the morning with a bunch of practice problems and homeworks in the evening. And so it was a really intense workload, but it was all tied to one material, which I thought would work better for me. The other thing that was really big with it is I oftentimes find myself succumbing to burnout over really long time span things. So college was awful for me because it was six and a half years. I was wearing out more and more each year. And by the sixth year, I was just a shell of a person. Uh, so when I looked at the boot camp route, it was only 14 weeks. And so that seemed like a really good option for me too, because it allows me to essentially focus on having really good systems for just 14 weeks, which is a much more... 
I think, reasonable process for somebody with ADHD than to look at a four-year commitment of trying to stay organized that whole time. I just was not ready for something like that. I, not, I haven't been organized for four years straight as an adult, and so the idea of doing that for school again just seemed impossible to me. The third big factor with the boot camp too is cost. Uh, my boot camp, even though it's one of the more expensive ones in my area, was only 15 grand. Uh, your average college tuition, I think, is gonna run you somewhere in the range of like 40 or 50 on the low end for a four year degree. So I think I got a pretty good deal for where I've ended up through that process. Boot camp selection is a very specific thing. I ended up going with Tech Elevator. They're a boot camp based out of Ohio originally, but they're spread all over the country now. I highly recommend them. And the main re two reasons I went for them was A, new salary for a, te a Tech Elevator grad at the time was 55 thousand dollars so my annual income plus the plus the price of the boot camp was less than fifty five thousand dollars so to me that just made a ton of sense uh and then the other big reason was the tech elevator has a 97 i believe percent placement rate nationally within six months of their boot camps completing uh and so that was just huge for me because if i can't find a job out of it i wasn't willing to spend the money and so i found a way to essentially greatly increase my odds of getting a job, knowing that that was part of their focus, and also knowing that they were gonna curate part of their program to that if they were gonna have that kind of placement rate. So they turned out to be a great option for me. I cannot speak highly enough. As somebody who ran an instructional program and an educational program, the people at Tech Elevator are phenomenal at what they do. They care a lot, they listen, they answer questions whenever, and they are just really good people who are focused on teaching you how to code as well as you can and in helping you transition into the work world too. Not just learning basic JavaScript skills, but like how do I actually work on an engineering team in a software engineering environment? How do I work in a scrum system? How do I do all those things? Tech Elevator covered all that, so I really was a big fan of that program. All right, so my particular route in the Tech Elevator cohort that I went through was to go through, um, essentially everything that they do is full stack. So I did, which means that it's operating from the full range of the software. So typically software is broken out into a back end and a front end, maybe a database layer that's off to the side. Um, but those are kind of the two spaces, front end being what you interact with as a user, back end being the supporting systems for that front end system. So when you work full stack, then you technically can work on any piece of that, be a database or be a front end, be a database or be a back end. It was a full stack bootcamp. Uh, I was focused on C Sharp and the .NET framework on the backend side. Uh, I don't currently work in that at all, but it was a pretty useful system to work within. I do, from what I've worked with Java, I do like C Sharp a little more than Java, even though Java is just ubiquitous at this point. So it is a pretty good uh, route to go if you want to learn how to code, is to go the Java route as well. To talk about just a little bit what the boot camp was like. So I mentioned that it was four hours a day of lecture, some homeworks in the evenings. Uh, there was also four different mini capstone assignments or three mini capstones, one final capstone project. Uh, the mini capstones were just little pair programming assignments so we could use good, get used to working on the same project for multiple days in a row, building a more complex system ourselves, having a little bit less support for questions and things. You learn a ton in those, those group projects and so that helped a lot. And then the final capstone was a two week process where essentially we're doing two-day sprints um, to build out a full application and then demo that to the general public at the end of the program. It was really good. Um, it kind of was structured back-end to front-end. So we did back-end, .NET, C Sharp, and then into database with SQL, and then moved into JavaScript, and then we used Vue.js as the framework that we built in the front-end with. One other thing to talk about here with the work thing too is I don't work in any of the technologies that I learned in. So the place I currently work is typically a Java house, but we, my team specifically, works a lot in Node as our back end and with React as the front end, specifically Gatsby as like a pre-compiled React engine. So I don't do anything related to the tech stacks I learned in my bootcamp. I learned a lot on the job. I've taught myself a ton about algorithmic complexity since then, so I do plan on doing some follow-up content for all of you bootcamp folks out there. Uh, soon as well to kind of talk through what my my process of learning a lot of that looked like. But yeah, the transition into new technologies, you know, it's hard, but once you're in the bootcamp mindset of learning all the time anyway, it's really easy to transition into it because you start learning the job, learning the new stack right as you get onto the job. And as long as you kind of are doing things the way you're supposed to be, you're engaged, you're learning, you're pair programming, you're gonna learn that technology fine. Your brain's already gonna be primed to learn new code languages. And so I think you're gonna have a fine time transitioning. It's, for me, it was honestly not bad at all. C-sharp to Java was a very, very easy transition to the point that IntelliSense essentially did all the translating for me. I just would kind of type in what I thought was close and then it would usually correct to something for me. So uh, don't be intimidated by the different stacks of the boot camps. Focus on the outcomes. I think that's the biggest piece of advice that I can give.
So talking about some of the challenges of going through a boot camp like this. So one of the big things was it's very uh, quick in its onboarding process. So you have to be ready to adapt to a technical environment really quickly. Uh, you know, you're starting with four hours of lecture very first day, day one, you have, you know, 40, 50 problems worth of homework that night. And it continues that way for 14 weeks. So it's a very brutal, grueling thing. So, you know, making sure that you're rested, making sure that you're not going into it super burned out is super helpful. And then also doing whatever kind of prep you can do. So finding YouTube channels you really like, like this one that can kind of help explain some of these concepts and things ahead of time, whatever you can learn ahead of time is gonna help you. Um, the other big thing is just like actually working within a logical framework can be a big transition. I was working in a service sector job as a manager, so I was dealing with a lot of soft, squishy stuff and having to work within a very technical framework again was a bit of a transition. I will say it's one that I enjoyed. Um, I, I would prefer to be working on hard technical problems than soft people related problems any day of the week. And so um, that turned out to be actually kind of a fun part for me was working on the technical things. You know, I think the experience itself is kind of fundamentally quite fun, though. Like, it's a lot of work and it's grueling, but the bonds you build with people as you go through a program like that are really, really tight. And that can be really cool and really impactful. And also, it's just really cool to learn that much in a 14-week period. Like, 14 weeks feels like a long time when you think about it, but when you're going through it, it feels like nothing. And so you essentially go from zero to 60 in a 14-week span. And so to then have that experience of, learning an entirely new trade in that short of a time frame. And granted, there is a ton you will still have to learn after a boot camp. But for me, I learned a lot of what I needed to know and I felt confident enough to go off and get a job that way. And that was huge for me. So uh, really impactful, really cool experience. I noticed around the sixth week, six to week eight, that was really when the burnout started for me. I felt like the latter third of the program was definitely a bit more of a, of a slog. Like I was consistently knocking the homework out a day early um, from the majority of the first two thirds of it. And by the last third, I was oftentimes finishing the homework at like 3 a.m. desperately because I was just so tired. I needed a break after lecture. I needed time to rest through the day. And so, uh, you know, that was definitely a thing to keep in mind as well. It is a grueling, grueling process. Talking about what it was like coming out of the boot camp. So when I finished the boot camp, uh, Tech Elevator has a really awesome pathway program that's all about the, the job hunt and how different things work that way. And so there was this feeling of support as I finished because I started meeting with them more consistently, which was really helpful. Uh, the job hunt is grueling. I think I sent out about 200 applications with one big asterisk on this being that I was applying from Columbus to New York. So my boot camp had no connections from the Columbus tech scene to the New York tech scene. And the New York tech scene is also a lot more saturated. So if you're not trying to work in one of the big tech hubs, I think you'll have an easier time than I did too. I have some friends that have been back through Tech Elevator who essentially had offers by the time they graduated and were, you know, had started within a month of finishing the program. So it is, three months is not the standard amount of time for me. It was because I was changing cities and it was also in the middle of 2020. So it was kind of in the midst of a lot of hiring freezes as well. It just took, you know, but the key is just be stubborn. You know, it only takes one job offer to start getting experiences. And once you have experience, it becomes much easier to find different software engineering jobs. So. It's just about finding that one. You only need one to say yes. You can't get discouraged by the ones that don't respond. Like I said, about three months, 200 applications sent. I think I went through the full process with four or five companies total before I found my current gig, which has been a great, great fit for me. I've learned a ton. I've grown a ton. It wasn't, it's in the finance sector, which wasn't really where I thought I was going to end up going, but it's been a great place to work and learn. I work on a prototyping team now, so I work on a lot of really fast turnaround things and I've learned a ton building things from the ground up that way. So the key being, it wasn't the kind of job that I thought I was looking for because it's, it's a large company and it's in the finance sector when I thought I wanted a small tech company. But I've learned a ton and I've had a lot of opportunity to grow through that, which I think is really kind of emblematic of what the bootcamp experience is like. Like the bootcamp experience is really just to give you enough skills to get the job. And then when you go out onto the job is when you start learning all the more advanced systems and the dynamics around who contributes what to code and testing and best practices and getting good at coding takes time. I think the best way to go into a bootcamp is to go into it wanting to learn the code skills and knowing you're gonna end up wherever you want. If you go into it thinking you're gonna work at Google or Microsoft at the end, it's probably not a good system for you. A lot of those engineers do come from bootcamps, but a lot also come from, come from undergrad programs. But if you just wanna pursue a new field, then I think that can be, the bootcamp can be a 
phenomenal way to find your way into software, which is just a great field to be in. It's growing. And that also brings us to the comp conversation. So for me, like I said, I was making $32,000 uh, a year at the start of this. That was after multiple raises and promotions in the climbing industry. So when I moved to New York, so granted took a pretty big uh, cost of living increase, about twice what Columbus is um, when I moved here, but I went from making $32,000 a year before Tech Elevator to making $100,000 a year after Tech Elevator with my, new, with my current gig, and I have since been promoted beyond that. And I think that just kind of gives you an idea. I, I really think that for people that are tech minded and, and have an interest and are passionate about working in technology, that a coding bootcamp is about as good of an investment as you can possibly make. I think you will get the money back out of it almost right away. I know Tech Elevator now does an income sharing agreement too, where you can, instead of paying ahead of time, you can pay um, out of a percentage of your income essentially after you get a job out of the program. And so that can be a great way if you don't have the money on hand to finance it as well. So. Yeah, um, if you like this, please let me know. I have thought about doing more bootcamp content. I'm not sure how saturated this space is, but I'm just out here to talk to you guys. If you are going through a bootcamp, you're gonna do great. Uh, stick with it. Uh, the key is diligence and perseverance. You will get there. You just need to keep fighting through it. You need to keep learning. Um, if you're out of a bootcamp in the job hunt, keep slogging through it. It sucks, um, but you know, life gets better on the other side and you will find a gig and then you will have experience and you'll be in this really stable profession going forward. So I believe in you. I know there's lots of other people that believe in you. You've got this. Stay with it. Keep working and I'll see you soon.